Welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. Welcome to episode 137 of the English with Kirsty podcast. And today I'm talking about something for the more intermediate or advanced learners, because I think often we talk about how we speak when we're a beginner learner or a lower intermediate. And sometimes that can be difficult because you don't have all the words that you need to express what you really want to say and how you really feel. And that can be tough because you need to improve your vocabulary then, because otherwise you can end up sounding a bit too abrupt. Um, I had somebody asking me for a meeting and it was like, I want a meeting with you tomorrow. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't sound very polite, but I think this particular individual wasn't trying to be rude. They just didn't have the, um, they didn't know how, they didn't have enough English to know how to phrase it in a, in a better way. Um, because when I was speaking with that person, they, they weren't like that. Um, but you know, sometimes when people are writing, um, they think about the key point in the sentence, which is what I tell people to do, but sometimes they don't have the polite vocabulary to go with it. Like, oh, I am I would like to have a meeting with you tomorrow. I'm wondering whether you're available. Please let me know and then we can arrange a time or something like that. Sounds a bit less abrupt than I want a meeting with you. <laughs> um, obviously, it helps if you know the person and, and also can make a judgment about how it was meant. But anyway, the problem I'm talking about today isn't this. It's when you can go the other way. Sometimes you can get so comfortable with the language maybe you've been learning it for years so your your language skills are really good but you know that you're not a native speaker perhaps and you you use too many words instead of the right amount I hadn't really thought about this being an issue until I did it the other day so um this is from my experience as a learner this this whole conversation came about because um, I use German a lot in my business and I speak to my customers in German. I write to them in German. I do that every day. It's nothing new or special. Um, but there was an email that I had to write, a business email that was a bit more kind of important. Um, and sometimes I, I hadn't had any dealings with this individual before. It was somebody that I was approaching for something. And because of that, I asked a native speaker to have a look over the text. I do that sometimes, not all the time because I would never get anything done, but if there's something that's going on the website or something that's a bit more important, I sometimes get someone to have a look at it for me and I would do the same for them. I've got a couple of arrangements with people um, and we have that kind of agreement where we help each other out with text. So I showed my text to the friend that was looking at it for me and she gave me some suggestions and they weren't really, I mean, there were a couple of mistakes that I'd made and unfortunately she found them, but it was more about the style and it really surprised me because she didn't use any words that I didn't know, but she managed to say what I wanted to say in half as many words as I had written originally. And that surprised me because I'm not like that in English. I don't waffle on, I think about what I want to say, I say it, I'm succinct, we move on to the next point usually. But when I was writing in a language that isn't my native language, I didn't do that. I It was almost like I was apologising for the fact that it wasn't my native language and I was making it super clear and being really going into more detail than I needed to, not being as confident as I could have been or as I would have been if I'd been doing it in my own language. And I think often we can think about this um, problems expressing yourself in another language being that you you don't say everything you want to say or that you aren't sure how to do something so you don't say it at all but sometimes it can go the other way so you can seem more maybe even less professional because you you don't come across in the confident way that you would in your own native language and it's almost like you've got another personality when you have other languages okay you don't have different personalities but it takes time before you can really express yourself in the other language and I don't think we ever really stop doing that I think it can certainly get easier and better but I think it's something we still need to think about certainly in social situations I can relax more now um, that doesn't mean I never make a mistake when I'm speaking other languages or, or German but I, I don't I'm not really aware of it if I go out for dinner with someone or for coffee then I just work in that language 
But I think if you're in a more kind of high level negotiation or meeting or something where you're under more pressure than you normally would be, maybe in a job interview or something like that, um, you really want to be the best version of you. And the best version of you is the real you, not the you that's trying to come out, breaking through this shell of another language, trying to, you know, really be be who you are, I guess. And it's tough because um, sometimes you think people might not understand you because it's not your native language. But I had a situation just this morning where I wrote to somebody in English. Uh, English was their native language. I asked three questions and I got answers, an answer to one of the questions and I had to write back and say, you know, thank you for that. But <laughs> I asked you two other questions in my email and I don't seem to have a reply to those. Can we sort this out? So it, sometimes people, whether it's your native language or not, they, they won't understand you. Or they won't read your email properly. They won't listen to you properly. And I think sometimes when we're using another language, we really feel a sense of responsibility that we have to make everything super clear and, um, and be almost apologetic for the fact that it's not our native language. I don't think everyone does this, um, but I think it's something to think about. You know, if you're a fairly confident person in your native language, then try to, to be that same person in the language that you're learning, because certainly I am not as sometimes not as direct in my other languages than I would be in English, because I get I get um, confidence from the fact that I can express myself and I know how to communicate the things that I want to say. I think that gives me confidence as a person because that's never been something that I've really worried about until I started learning other languages. And so what am I really saying today? I think I'm saying that it's you never stop learning. Um, and I would consider I've I've got my C2 in German, so that means that's the European frame of language reference. Uh, that's wrong, isn't it? Anyway, um, it's a way of telling where you are on the whole kind of language scale. And C2 is pretty much close to native speaker. It isn't native speaker, but it's it's the highest you can get. Um, so I've got that. And yet still, <laughs> I have questions of identity and language. And I maybe they never go away, especially if you don't live in the country whose language you're learning. Maybe that's something we always have to work on, but I think it's it's more of an encouragement than a this never gets any better kind of message today because, you know, we can keep working on this. We can keep improving it. And just if you're having to do something a bit more demanding that, that really tests your ability to c communicate in a professional setting, whether that's an interview or um, higher level presentation, or going to argue your case and present your case for something. And I think it's good to not see yourself as, oh, I'm already at a disadvantage because I'm not presenting in my native language, but just to you know have the confidence in you, in yourself as a person, in what you know, in the language skills that you've acquired so far, and in the knowledge and experience that you have in the field that you're in. Because I think sometimes we can lose sight of that even if we've been doing it for years and years and we've forgotten about it. Um, I think sometimes it's just good to take stock and to, to make sure that you're being a really kind of true representation of you when you're speaking in the other language at a higher level. I don't know if anyone can relate to this. Maybe some people can't. Maybe they think it's maybe you think it's exactly the same, whether you're speaking English or another language. Maybe you find it easier to talk about certain things in one language or to show your emotions or to um, I don't know, but I, I certainly think it's something we continue to think about. And I think it's always good, even if you're somebody who's been using a language for years and years, sometimes just to get feedback from someone else. It can be a teacher, but it can just be a friend as well. Um, because sometimes we learn habits that we don't realise we've picked up because nobody corrects us because we may be really fluent. And most of the time it's OK, there aren't any mistakes. But, you know, you can always learn something new. So even for people that have been learning a language for a long time, I would challenge you today and say, you know, what else can you learn? How can you improve? Is there someone that can give you some feedback just to, to help you be that bit better than you were yesterday? Because I'm, I'm writing an article for my other website at the moment. I'm doing the research for it. And it's about um, adult learning because in the UK we have adult learning week at the end of June. And the article that I'm writing is about three different people doing very different things, 
one of them is learning English, but the other two aren't. Um, and how as an adult you can do new things or um, increase your knowledge in an area that you already know something about. And you can never, you should never stop learning because it's not just something that you do at school. And that's really what I wanted to say today. If you're, if you think, oh, I've been learning English for years and I, I understand everything and I can communicate really easily. I think even then, like I realized with my German, there are still things that you can do to improve that there was nothing in what I'd written that didn't make sense, but it just wasn't the best that I could do. And I know that I could have done better in my own language. So it just just reminded me that we, we never stop learning. And that's a really good thing because then it gives us more opportunities every day to learn something new. So let me know what you think about this. Um, if you've got any other examples or if you want to share your thoughts, then you can do that. There's um, an email address, which is podcast at englishwithkirsty.com. And I'll also open the comments up on the the post for this. So the podcast show notes page will be englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 137. So have a good week and have fun learning English. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes. 